<laughs> I want to start this video with the big side to like tonally indicate to you and make you viscerally feel with me the apprehension and big deal it is that I'm going to be sharing so many intensely personal things with you today. But I don't naturally just do a big sigh. <laughs> I do little ones, but I don't think those communicate the same feeling, you know? I started this channel because the idea of YouTube has always just tickled my brain in a really nice way. Watching YouTubers like Ryan Higo when I was a kid and seeing that just anyone could go and make things and they could be amazing. That was a really cool realization for me and still has a very powerful effect on my life. YouTube is still my favorite thing to watch in general. And while traditional media is pretty awesome, YouTube really holds a special place in my heart. I just really adore that this platform exists where you can learn new things and experience the perspectives of others and enjoy other people's talents. There's a lot of crap on here too, but I like this place a lot. So six years ago, I decided I wanted to try to be part of it. And I had the right idea. I'm not gonna get any better if I don't start making things. I'm not gonna get used to talking to a camera if I don't start making things. So that's what this channel is for. There's a difference between knowing the answer on a test and actually bringing practical knowledge into the real world. Those of you who have been around a little longer may remember me saying things throughout my history of making videos here over the past six years, like hopefully I'll get to make more things soon, or I've got this video planned, it might be coming out sometime in the next few months, or hopefully I'm gonna have time to work on some personal projects some more soon once work slows down. But I rarely, if ever, really followed up on most of those desires. I have so many videos that I filmed but never edited and even more that either still live on in my brain or I've just completely forgotten about. In essence, for years I was wanting to create things but never making them. Now, thanks to therapy, I realized why I was kind of existing in that really weird limbo. The short and easy answer is it was a mix of perfectionism and a fear of failure that were both kind of hiding behind a tool that has actually served me well over the years, procrastination. Let's start with the perfectionism because though I would often describe myself as a perfectionist to people over the years, I didn't actually think that I was. I was aware that I do good work, I make cool things, I've received a lot of external validation over the years. So I've known for a long time that people expect good stuff from me. So when describing myself to others, I actually adopted the term perfectionist. I don't know if this is an undiagnosed ADHD thing or just a neurodiversity sort of thing, but I naturally work in spurts. I get excited about something and then I pour myself into it and then I'm done and I need to recharge. Like after I finish something, just my brain and my full self just, just need a break, you know? Working on a schedule, like eight to 10 hours a day, five to six days a week, that has always sounded like absolute torture to me and I'm realizing that a lot of things I've done throughout my life have been to specifically avoid that like restriction and just, it doesn't, it doesn't feel good on my brain and so I've done a lot to try to avoid that. I felt so trapped by traditional work that I started my own business and I get to work from home and I get to sleep in when my husband has to wake up early and go to work every day. Yes, I work into the evenings and through the nights sometimes and there is a whole different type of stress that comes from you being the source of whether or not you're going to get paid. In some ways, it's definitely easier to just put in the hours somewhere else and get your money. But I've so often felt like I honestly couldn't handle the lives other people live. So why is it fair that I get to do what I do? I think some of this comes from a time blindness sort of situation. I honestly do not know how long it takes me to complete projects. Even though I've timed it out in the past and I could give you an answer for how long a certain sort of project takes, I do not inherently within me know how long it takes me to complete 
the things I make. Especially for video, I kind of get sucked into the project, work for however long my brain is working, and then I go and I take a break when my, my brain stops being able to really produce anything creative and good, right? And I just rinse and repeat this process at home in my own space until suddenly I have like a really cool, <clears throat> a complete, awesome, wonderful video. I'm, I'm literally processing this right now as I'm talking to you, but maybe, maybe part of the problem where I get this feeling like I don't work hard is because when I'm able to work in that way, I'm intentionally working from a really creative, like I'm enjoying it. It's a very fulfilling space and it doesn't feel like work because I'm excited and I'm just getting my thoughts and my feelings out into the video or I'm making my creative vision sort of come to light. And unless I have to because of a deadline, I don't push through to just kind of do things on rote because in a, in a way that hurts my brain because I will make something better if I'm able to take that break and then come back to it from a kind of fresh, creative point of view. Like that is the best timeline to make the best work I make. And maybe for a long time, I've just associated work with that feeling of like just pushing through when your brain doesn't feel good and you, you're, you're just trying your hardest and you're working so hard to focus. Maybe, maybe, there's a part of me that still thinks that that is what work is supposed to be. And since I'm not always doing that, and since my best work doesn't come from that, there's something wrong with me. We're figuring this out together. I'm gonna go back to my script here. My script, I'm saying, even though I know logically the way I work is probably good and closer to a healthy life balance than what a lot of people in America do, I still often feel incredibly guilty just for not doing more. And I know some of this stems from having bad mental health days where I'm literally on my phone the entire day and I've gotten absolutely nothing productive done at all. And that actually leads us full circle to the perfectionism I do actually have. Remember how I know I make good things because people have always told me so? That doesn't mean I am also not intensely critical of a whole lot of work and different projects I've done in the past. I can appreciate that other people might like a thing I've made, but they are so often so intensely inferior to what I have imagined in my brain that I just end up feeling like a failure. And because I wasn't consciously examining these thoughts for a long time, they kind of just, they kind of just turned into a ball of inferiority in here, kind of just existing alongside the view that I am competent. I was inherently somehow believing both of these things at the same time. My subconscious was not allowing me the normal try something, learn from it, get better, progression. It was expecting me to be perfect immediately and then running from any results that didn't live up to the insanely high standards I had set for myself. This ended up hijacking my procrastination and creating the result you see on my YouTube channel today. Now, procrastination has been a lifelong tool for me. It gave me the focus I needed to get through a lot of life. Starting a paper the hour before it was due, waking up at four in the morning in high school to do my math homework, because that was the time that my brain could actually work and do the math. That was all just par for the course for me. 2020 kicked my perfectionism into overdrive, however. It's crazy how that global trauma has really messed us all up in so many different ways. So now, instead of procrastination, Perfectionism said, don't even start. Things weren't going to live up to the beautiful picture I had in my mind anyway. I was just going to be a failure. But you can't fail if you don't try. Perfectionism subtly guided me. I never thought that I was a person who was afraid of failure. I could logically explain to any friend that our value comes from who we are, not what we do. I could explain that even if we don't succeed on our first try, we learn so much from that experience and are able to go and do better the next time. But 
somewhere along the way growing up, I got so used to being the smart kid, the athletic kid, the funny kid, and using those talents to gain the acceptance of others, that somehow appearing perfect became my priority. I have always been distinctly aware of the fact that nobody is perfect, but a lot of people pretend like they are. And lots of people believe the act of those people that put on that front. Everyone I've ever met turns out just to be another human who makes complete sense to me with their own flaws and struggles. But I know lots of folks who are idolized because they don't let the world see that. I'm realizing I don't trust the general public's reading on who is a, a cool or impressive person very strongly at all. I actually think there's a ton of people who don't know how to see past the surface. This seems like a really cynical thought for me. I, I don't like it, but I'm acknowledging that that is what I think. And I formed this impression when I was quite young and I've been holding on to it, apparently, gathering more information to support it over the years. Problem is, when a child's mind sees this, and they know that one of the easiest ways to make it through life is to make sure that people like you, suddenly it becomes real important that you never show any weakness. Nobody is perfect, but lots of people in the world don't seem to realize that. And it seems like it would be better to have them on your side, adoring you, rather than judging you for your flaws. I really did structure so many parts of who I was around what I thought people wanted to see. What I thought people wanted to hear, what I thought would make me the most likable, make it the easiest for me to just, you know, make it through without conflict in society. Example time. In college, I realized I would lie to others about the stupidest things. When asked why I did something, I would make up a reason that seemed the most reasonable in my head, rather than saying something like, I got distracted, or the word sounded funny in my head and I just wanted to say it out loud. I'd come up with like a whole, a whole rational description, like I'd thought this whole thing through of why I'd just done the thing I did. That wasn't the reason I just did the thing I did. It wasn't ever anything for like hurtful or like trying to excuse myself for something I did wrong. I just wasn't giving my actual reasoning behind random mundane things I was doing. I would answer with what I thought people wanted or expected to hear, or something maybe I thought it would make, things that would make me seem more rational. Sometimes I'd say I had a headache, when in truth I was actually struggling with overwhelming anxiety and the perfectionism we've been talking about here. That one makes more sense because I didn't even have the words to describe what I was experiencing to myself. I just felt weird and wrong and didn't know how to express it. But everyone understands a headache. But in college, I realized I was doing this and started along a path attempting to stop doing that because I realized you can't build authentic relationships when part of the foundation are these weird, stupid little lies. And not just lies you're telling to other people. I was telling these lies to myself as well. Like, like I'd be asked a question and I would try to think of the best sounding response to it instead of like actually checking in and knowing why I did the thing or why I said the thing. I wish I could give you a more concrete example of what I'm describing right now. Cause I know it's so weird. Anyway, so all of this came together into a big insecure, afraid of failing because how could anyone meet the impossible standards that I had for myself? Heather. <laughs> I'd still be able to make things, but with the caveat to myself that I wasn't trying super hard because if I didn't give it my all, there was still the chance that I could succeed somewhere in the future. I wouldn't be a failure. If I made something I didn't like that didn't live up to my standards, 
that's okay because I wasn't trying my hardest. This meant I never really went all out on the things I truly cared about though. And that stinks. If you haven't given it your all, that hypothetical, perfect version of yourself can still exist in your mind. They might someday be able to do the thing. If you try your hardest and then you fail though, then you know for sure that you're not good enough. And that would be devastating if you're letting your value be determined by what you do and not who you are. And that's easy to do when you're subconsciously trying to be perfect for everyone, for your parents, for your teachers, for your church, for your spouse. This stuff is insidious, man. So I've been unpacking this the past couple of years and have recently come to the realization that this has been affecting, not to be cliche, but my dreams. <laughs> When I envision my perfect future, it is filled with creating content I love and sharing it with the world. I started this channel because I wanted to do just that. I would love to be able to support myself and my family while telling stories and sharing thoughts and experiences that I care about. That is the ultimate dream. But for the past six years, I've been telling myself that this is just a hobby. So I never put too much energy into my videos because if I really try, well, then I have the chance to fail. And this is something, being successful on YouTube, something that's always felt like the wildest pipe dream. So if I try and I fail, then I know that it will never happen. I will know that I wasn't good enough. I won't be able to imagine that perfect future in my head anymore because I'll know I wasn't able to succeed. And that's been such a terrifying thought for so long that I never really consciously addressed or realized. But what if I can do it? What if I try my best and do everything I can and do find some form of success. Maybe I'll have a moderately sized channel someday that can contribute a little bit towards my bills. Maybe I won't be phenomenal and maybe that's okay. At least I'll be making things. At least I'll have tried. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't expect the algorithm to treat me very kindly because my videos are not going to fit all into one niche. I'm not just going to make video essays or mermaid swim videos or travel experiences or aerial routines. I'm not just gonna have one thing. I'm gonna do all of that and probably other things. I need to start making things and figuring out my style and learning what it is I truly love creating and letting the things I create not always be perfect. And I think the algorithm likes it when you know exactly what you're getting when you come to a channel, right? But it also likes consistency. And I'm gonna give it that. That I can promise you. That also really scares me because for so long I've told myself, well, the reason my channel isn't growing is because I'm not consistent with it. The algorithm likes consistency. So if I posted more often, I think it would grow. This is going to be my chance to find out if that's actually true. If my work is actually good enough. I don't like that. I, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, I'm doing it though. We, we're doing this together. Thank you for being here with me through it. If you have friends or family who you think would enjoy some of the things I make and want to share it with them, I would ever so deeply appreciate that. But welcome to my next adventure. Let's see if I have what it takes. I don't know where in the video to put this, but the process of making this video has actually been super healing for me. I feel like for the first time in my life, I'm learning to communicate really 
honestly. Actually being able to identify in myself where certain feelings and motivations are coming from, and then being able to accurately express that to others without instinctively replying with what I think they want to hear or I think will make them like me more. It's a lot of unlearning, but it feels so good. <sighs> I literally just finished a script and filming of this video yesterday, started editing it, and while reviewing it, decided, nope, I'm doing it again today, and I'm doing it better, because I already saw a bunch of things I wanted to improve, so I'm putting in the work again, because it's not going to be perfect the first time, and that's how I'm going to learn. I'm genuinely so encouraged that I might be able to do this right now.